Okay, this is the example video for lecture 3, stationary wave in air column. As usual, you can find the question beforehand. But before we start, I want to sketch out the graph of uh, intensity, which is once again energy, uh, energy per unit area, okay, against position. So what is the energy at different, different points in the air column? So you can see, right, at NT nodes, there is where you get maximum amplitude. Maximum amplitude means maximum energy law. So at empty nodes, you will have maximum energy, and at nodes, you will have minimum, sometimes even zero energy. Okay, so empty node is maximum, node go down is minimum, empty node is maximum, node is minimum, and so on and so forth. So when we look at May June 12 paper 2 2. I'm just resizing the question, lazy to edit that part out. You will notice that uh, the shape is about the same. But what is important is actually where on earth is lambda, right? So if you do your past year question, you will notice that there's one question you can't do with a graph that looks like this. This is because here to here that looks like lambda is actually lambda over 2 because it's anti node to anti node. All right? So that is lambda over 2, uh, not lambda for a stationary wave. So I'm just going to casually label. So from, for this question, you will notice that this is a variation of intensity of the sound wave. Actually, if you want to know, uh, this shape is sine square. Think about it. Why is it sine square? If cannot also, never mind, you hang on first. Okay? So um, the nodes and anti nodes I will label. Okay? So because they say on the x-axis, so I better label on the x-axis law. Label the positions of nodes and anti nodes. So I, I listen to question one because I want the mark, you see. So I check and make sure all the points are properly plotted. No roughly, uh, it has to be accurate. So all this separation has have to be the same gap. Okay, so you count the boxes and plot out the same gap or use your ruler. Okay, so these are the nodes and the anti nodes. It's done. Speed of sound is 340. Determine the frequency. So we are going to use V equal to F lambda, but step one is to find lambda, right? So lambda will be N to N. N to N is lambda over 2. Then this one looks like 34. So lambda over 2 is 34 centimeters, which is 0 0.78 meters. And we can just plug into the equation V equal to F lambda. And we can find our frequency. This is a pretty straightforward question once you know how to interpret the intensity position graph. Okay? So... 440 hertz, which is the normal tone they use to tune your instruments, right? I don't know. We're going to move on. Okay, hang on. There's a second graph. What do I want to draw in the second graph? Well, if you look at the red line, we are drawing displacement against position. And then we also drew intensity against position. Now I want to draw air pressure uh, change or vary variance. Okay, I think I made a slight mistake in the graph. But never mind, it's fine. Air pressure variation. Uh, the change in pressure. Lah. Actually, it should be... Basically, the graph that I draw is entirely positive. It should have been negative. So later on, if you're drawing this in your notes, bump it down. I will fix this in the actual notes that I send out to you, okay? So in this case, you will expect the pressure will change, okay? And you can see where all the dirt is, uh, is where the pressure is... Uh, the highest. Okay, so where the nodes are, it will be a pressure anti node. So that is where the pressure will change the most. Okay. Yep. So now we're going to look at a uh, another question from March 18. So we're going to start off easy. State the condition required for formation of stationary wave. You have two identical wave source with the same frequency, same wavelength, same amplitude. Okay. Uh, key points must be there. So they overlap. And you also should mention that they are traveling in opposite direction. So overlaps while traveling in opposite direction. That will do. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is a CRO trace and detected by a microphone. You are given the wavelength and the speed of sound. So you are asked to find the frequency, which is just plug and play. Lah. Okay. 
So your frequency in this case is actually quite a number with repeated decimals. Please discipline yourself and write 3 as F the most, at most, okay? So determine the time-based setting. So in this kind of situation, right, um, the first thing I'll do is I'll find the period, okay? And as, as, as expected, this period number is a bit weird, lah. It's divided by 33, lah. So I'm just going to write in 2SF, okay? Might or might not use it later, we shall see how. And uh, I'm going to go up to the graph and try to determine how many cycles there are in 8CM. There are four big boxes, so it's 8CM. So first things first, I am going to draw the equilibrium position because that will allow me to actually count the lambda. So if I look at it, it looks like one and a half cycle lah. Okay, so 8 cm, 4 big boxes is 1.5 cycle. So 1 cm will be 1.5. I plug in the value of 1 cycle. I scan not accurate, so I put the whole thing in and then divide by 8. Okay. 8 cm, 1.5 cycle. So from here, I will get something that looks like 1.02 times 10 to the power of 94 seconds. You can put 1.0 times 10 to the power of 94. It's fine. Okay. So we're going to move on. Intensity is now half. Wavelength of the sound is unchanged. Which means the frequency also doesn't change. Eh? So we assume that the amplitude of the trace is proportional to the amplitude of the sound wave. Great. So we know I is proportional to A squared. So let's say I take I divided by I over 2, intensity is half. What happens to my new A? Now I'm going to check out the old A first. The old A looks like 2.2 cm. Okay, that's me counting the boxes, 2.2 cm. So I'm just going to put 2.2 here, square both sides. Please square, all right? And I'm just going to quickly simplify this. On one end, you get root 2. On the other end, you get 2.2 over A because I bring over the 2, root 2 to square root. Lah. All right? And this will give me 1.56, around 1.6. 1.56 is a bit hard to plot. So I'm going to attempt to plot 1.6 at all the amplitude positions, okay? So I'm going to need to zoom in because all eyes all right so as you can see i'm trying to find 1.6 underneath each peak okay so 1.6 here and the third one on your left 1.6 and now we will just join the dots of course when the intensity is zero it's zero lah. all right this is not a stationary wave lah. it's just a normal old wave a normal sound wave trans progressive wave all right, so I'm just going to slowly and nicely join the the curve. All right, so this question is two marks. One mark if you maintain the same wavelength. One mark is when your uh, amplitude decreases to 1.6. Okay. Nice. All right, so I'm going to move on. Now the loudspeaker is put on top of a vertical tube and then the tap can open, uh, the liquid can flow out. Okay, the tap at the bottom is open, so the liquid drains out at a constant rate. Wavelength of the sound of the loudspeaker is 0 0.18 meter. Sure. Sound is, the loud sound, the sound is that is heard uh, first becomes much louder. So we got, by the way, I'm just highlighting all the important information. First becomes louder at A and then becomes much louder when it's at B. So these are both your resonant lengths. Okay, so the best uh, point of attack here, so to speak, is to sketch out the wave profile. So you can see now I'm trying to sketch. At level B, you probably will get something like this. At level A, it will be quarter. So the difference, the vertical distance between A and B is actually just lambda over 2 because you are just adding lambda over 2, which will be 0 0.09 meter, okay? Because you just add in the lambda over 2. Ma. So label the notes, okay, I have. Label with letter N the notes. 
okay? The mass of the liquid leaving the tube per unit time is 6.7 grams per second. The tube has an internal cross-section of 13 centimeters square, density 0 0.79 gram per cm. Calculate the time taken for the liquid to move from level A to level B. So my friends, this kind of question, right, you should just stop and think a bit. Lah. If you know the mass, you can find the time. To find the mass, you have density. So you need volume. Okay, and volume of the air column would be cross-sectional area times length. So I'm just going to label the cross-sectional area here for you in figure 4.2. Okay, so basically what happens is that the water will fall from level A to level B. Okay, and this is the length L. That is the volume of the water that fell. So I'll just take A times L. Alright, and I think I can start plugging that into my equations to find values of stuff. Density is mass per unit volume, okay, it's, which is equal to mass over AL. So density is 0 0.49, so 0 0.79. Uh, area is 13 cm square, and the length, so you see, uh, we can keep the volume in cm cube if everything is in cm. So 13 is cm square, no need to convert. And uh, 0 0.09 is 9 cm. Okay? So finally, you will get your m in grams uh, because it's gram per cm. So the pressing my calculator, I'll get 92.43 gram. Not final answer, I will take more decimal points. Lah. So mass per unit time is 6.7 gram per second. So time would be 92.43 divided by 6.7. And I arrive at... I think 13.8 seconds. Okay, so this is not really physics, it's just maths. All right, so that would be February FM 18. You can try task 1.2. There are a few more questions there. All right, here I'm going on to the objectives, which are a bit harder, not harder, lah. just want to show you the multiples, the harmonics, so to speak, which they tend to ask in objective. So the first question here, the diagram shows a tuning fork above a tube. The air column is 25 cm. Stationary wave is set up. This is the minimum length with the lower end sealed. What are the other lengths that can create a stationary wave? So the lower end seal with the length changing uh, is actually the green color wave. Lah. You vary the length. So if you remember it's odd, you can just take, oh, 25, 25 times 3. 25 times 5, and so the answer will be D. But miss, I don't remember this kind of thing. Leh. Okay, lo, you sketch. Lo. Open end is empty node, close end is node. This is the simplest one, 25 cm. The next one, again, we are making the length longer. So I'm going to have to fit another AN inside. Okay, so I'm just going to get this shape. Something like that. Lah. All right. So that means here is 25, uh, that means here to here is 25, then here to here is another 25, you get 75. Uh. I'll repeat the same process again, but then I'm running out of space. So from here to here, you add lambda over 2. You go down again, uh, you add another lambda over 2. Okay, I'm going to draw it slightly out of alignment. So you can see here your lambda multiplied by 3. Okay, so your frequency will also change by a factor of 3. So I am going to... Repeat the process again. Actually, not lambda multiplied by 3. The length multiplied by 3. Okay, so you got lambda over 2, lambda over 2, lambda over 4. So here to here, you add another lambda over 2. So it's 5 lambda over 4. So again, it's 5 times. The factor is 5. The length will go 5 times longer. Alright. So odd harmonics. One close end is odd harmonics. Alright, we're going to move on to another odd harmonic situation here. It says that the musical instrument is blown and then you have a note at the mouthpiece and an empty note at the other end. Lowest frequency that the bugle can produce is 92 hertz. Okay, what are the other possible different frequencies? So 92 hertz, lowest frequency is fundamental. Okay, la, so let's say again you don't remember. So you know it's lambda over 4. Okay, and then you get lambda over 4 plus half lambda, 3 lambda over 4. And then I notice I got run out of space, so I redraw the table again. So basically, whenever we level up, we add lambda over 2. Okay, so if you cannot remember, just think about it. We add lambda over 2 each time we travel, or we go up another overtone. 
So this is 5 lambda over 4, and finally lambda over 4 plus 3 times lambda over 2 is 7 lambda over 4. So from here, right, you will notice that we are multiplying by 3, multiplying by 5, okay, and then the factor here will be 7. Okay, these are all for frequencies, huh? okay? So because of this, um, what happens is that you can just multiply by 3, and multiply by 5 and check the frequencies one by one, your answer will be C. Again, odd harmonics. Odd. Okay, the next example that we will look at is this one. Okay, so you have two pipes, P and Q, and you are given the wavelength 20 cm. One is closed end, one is open end. Okay, so in which pipes are stationary waveform? So I think by now you should identify that, hey, P is a uh, odd harmonics. So 1, 1, 3 over 4, 1 over 4, 5 over 4. So we know lambda as 20 cm. So you can test lah, all the lambdas appropriately. Substitute 20 cm, you will get 5, 15, 25, 35. In this case, 35 is possible. So for Q, is all harmonics. So lambda over 2, which is 10 cm, because lambda is 20. Then lambda over 2 plus lambda over 2, add another 10 cm law. 10 plus 10 is 20. Okay, so it's the same idea. Alright, you add another lambda over 2, you get 30. Then you add another lambda over 2. So all these are different possible lengths of the column. Okay, so, so yeah, so you get 30 cm. Then, finally, you will get 50 cm because it fits inside the pattern. So your answer will be P and Q. All right. Goodbye.